in the fullness of time. What I find awesome and joy inspiring in the stories of the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke is watching God in and through the lives of ordinary people like you and me, ordering the fulfillment of his promises of deliverance and salvation for humanity and all of creation. This is the third Sunday of Advent and the theme is joy. The joy candle in the Advent wreath is pink, representing the lifting of the darkness in anticipation of the birth of Christ. Good morning, you beautiful people of God. I'm Pastor Lane Van, serving Constantine and White Pigeon United Methodist Churches. If you'd like to be notified of any upcoming uh, videos for our, of our Sunday devotions, please click on the like button and on the subscribe button. Let's begin our time together with prayer. Holy God of joy, we rejoice in the reality of who you are. We live within the joy of your love for us. Our contentment comes and goes, our happiness ebbs and flows, our feelings depend upon our circumstances, our physical health, and our brain chemistry. But our joy is deeply rooted in our identity as your beloved children, and we give you thanks. Amen. Let's light the Advent candle. Light three candles. May they ever glow. May the good news calm our fears. Give us flowers and not sorrow olive oil in place of tears. Lord, you heal the brokenhearted. We are captives. Give release. Light three candles, let them brightly burn. May our joy in you increase. Our scripture reading for the Advent candle lighting is Isaiah 9 verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn and to provide for those who mourn in Zion to give them a garland instead of ashes and oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined ones the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her, her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The candles of hope and peace have been lit. Today, we add the candle of joy. The good news is that the brokenhearted will be healed and those who are held captive will be set free. Let us pray. O oh God, we know you have done great things for our good. Help us to experience your joy and our sorrow so that our broken hearts may be healed through your Son. Amen. 
Today, we're going to look at the story of Mary's visit with Elizabeth. Let's listen as I read Luke 1, verses 39 through 56, God's word for us today. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been what was spoken to her. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty ones has done the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned home. Let's pray. O oh Lord, the word, may the word of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Church of the Visitation, formerly the Abbey Church of St. John in the Woods, is a Catholic church in Ian Kairem, Jerusalem, and honors the visit paid by the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, to Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. This is the site where tradition tells us that Mary recited her song of joy and praise the Magnificent. The courtyard contains a statue of Mary and Elizabeth, and on the wall opposite the entrance to the lower church are 42 ceramic tablets bearing the verses of the Magnificent in as many different languages. In response to Elizabeth's confirmations of God's actions in Mary's life through the response of her unborn child and her prophetic words echoing the angel Gabriel, Gabriel, Mary begins her song with my Lord, my soul magnifies the Lord. We magnify God not by making him bigger than he truly is, but by making him greater in our thoughts, in our affections, in our memories, and in our expectations. In doing so, we enter into kind of a hyper awareness of God with us and our response to his presence is an expression of joy. Nehemiah 8.10 tells us, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The jo joy is the product of our faith in the future based on what God has done in the past and in the present. It gives us the strength to be obedient and to live sacrificially because God had proven repeatedly his steadfast love and mercy. And with the proof of the truth of the angel's word, she had the joy of the Lord that would be her strength even to watching her son die on a cross for our sins. Mary rejoiced because forgiveness, deliverance, and restoration were at hand. My husband and I 
faced many challenges during our time together. We got married during the crash of the auto industry in Michigan and the recession. We faced times of unemployment and underemployment, life changes, disappointments, and loss. We learned life lessons and grew from our experiences and all through this saw God at work in our lives. When something major would happen, we would affirm this with each other. God got us through all those tough times and God will get us through that. Remembering and rejoicing in what God had done for us sustained us. Right now, let's be honest, this year Christmas will not be all merry and bright for any of us. But has every Christmas been wonderful? Were there years where the lights were dimmed by the loss of a loved one? Worries over the future or being far away from family and friends? How was God present with us during those times? How is God with us this year? How is God sustaining us? Remember, joy is the product of our faith in the future based on what God has done in the past and in the present. It is it the strength. It is our strength in times like these. And in these times, God comes into our midst and brings us joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Light of the world, come into the darkness that hangs over the season. Open our eyes, our eyes to see the wonder of your love and the beauty of your faithfulness. You are our hope. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the source of our life and our joy. Be with us, sustain us, and watch over us. Amen. And so, beloved of God, may his love surround you. May the peace of Christ fill you and the Holy Spirit guide your way through this season. May your joy be full. Have a blessed week, everyone, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.